welcome back to the SBP podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. I'm your host, Susie Botello, and you are listening to episode 119. Hey guys, I've got a very special guest here today. You haven't, actually my guest was here back in August of 2021. His name is Ant Pruitt, and if you don't know him, I'll be surprised. Ant, how are you? <laughs> I'm unbelievable as always, ma'am. How you be? I'm fantastic because I'm here talking to you right now, and I just think that's <laughs> awesome because it's a Friday <laughs> night, Ant, and, you know, we both had a busy week, a busy day, and mm, yet here mm, we are past understatement five. Understatement of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people underestimate, uh, you know, I spent half half my morning, you know, and probably a little bit in the evening for the other side of the world. Happy Friday. Mm-hmm. Happy weekend. Yay. Follow Friday, all that stuff. But, you know, I'm going, yeah, I've got stuff planned for tonight, like, you know, recording a podcast with Aunt Pruitt. Um, and you do things like that, too. And I think a lot of people forget content creators. We just never stop. Yeah, un- unfortunately and fortunately, I'll say that. Um, it's nice to have a motor, but every now and then we we definitely need to just sort of sit down and take a breather. And I got to tell you, Miss Susie, I'm going to take a breather tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a breather tomorrow and then Sunday I'm recording another podcast. How's that? Uh, but I'm not really going to record, take a full breather because, as mm. you know, I've got a lot of films to watch. Don't yeah, shop with yeah. uh, smartphones. Tis the season. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a great segue, actually. Um, Ant, you're one of the judges for the short film competition this year. I yep. welcome you with open arms. You don't even know what you got yourself into, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the invitation. You know, I, I am... I I look at film, um, I know I look at film differently from the people that's living here in my home, and I know I look at film differently from the people that are critically acclaimed, if you will, but I like to think that my view has values when it comes to an artistic standpoint of the films that are being created today, whether it's on the big screens with the Super 35 sensors or the smaller screens of YouTube created with these half inch sensors in smartphones. See, I knew you were going to do something incredible like that and give us the the technical aspect of of the screens. Uh, One of the things that Ant does is he talks tech a lot. Uh, No, no, you have a lot of (laughs) <laughs> how many how many podcasts do you host and how many are you um because you're part of Twit, right? And mm-hmm. they have <laughs> their that I I love Twit. Uh mm-hmm. their podcast, their episodes, I should say, are like two and a half hours or so, uh, for the most part. Which is like I don't know, sitting down and saying, I'm gonna watch The Godfather. almost every night wow when you put it like that (laughs) but it's entertaining and you learn a lot you know but i know you do that and you also have Mm -hmm. your own show with twit and you Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. do your other uh photography one or is that that's not part of it or is it yeah hands-on photography is part of the twit Network. Uh, that is the show that brought me to Petaluma, California from Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, Twit reached out to me and just say, hey, we would like for you to come out here and start a photography show for our network. Would you be interested? And of course, I said, hell yeah. And um, <laughs> I showed up. And in addition to that, I do... Uh, I co-host a show called This Week in Google, which is slowly turning into something else beyond its title. (laughs) We talk (laughs) about Google every now and then, but the show is mostly a discussion about big tech, whether it's Google, whether it's Facebook or or Amazon or Twitter or whatever, just just the big tech companies and what's going on from 
a technology standpoint, from a, a legal and political standpoint and moral standpoint. And we have some pretty serious discussions on there, but we also have a lot of fun on that show. And that's one of those two hour shows, sometimes three hour shows um, each Wednesday. Um, I love that show. Not not I, I just because you're in it, although that has a big part to do with, you know, but also <laughs> because <laughs> you talk about things, you know, I read, I don't sit around and read books. You know, that right, takes some right. serious patience um, right. and focus. I'm not smart enough for that myself. It still, <laughs> it still surprises me that I'm even on that show because those cats are so smart. Good grief. That, but, but it's, what I like about it is, you know, I, I read a lot of stuff throughout the day, articles and things like that. And mm-hmm. I love that stuff. I love finding, even things I don't understand, I like to know about. You know, there's stuff about cybersecurity. There's stuff about, you know, social media, little tricks and, and think SEO. You know, there's all mm-hmm. these different things and they're all constantly changing, you know, because you can you could read an article from six months ago, like Google searches has changed, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. And you don't mm-hmm. know what's going on. And that's why I feel like I'm selling your show. But anyways, um, <laughs> it's a great it's a great fun show. And also, yes, uh, sometimes if you're taking a drink of tea or something and you're listening and aunt says something silly, you might spit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> It's never me saying anything silly. I'm usually laughing at them. Oh, man. Yeah, I I love that show. It is hosted by um, our chief twit, Mr. Leo Laporte, of course. But um, our co-hosts are uh, Mrs. Stacey Higginbotham. She specializes in IoT and and, um, uh, chips in particular, as well as there's Mr. Jeff Jarvis. He's a um, college professor at the City University of New York. And then there's me. I'm, you know, an, I'm an, an actual in-studio host um, and compared to our other two co-hosts. But I think I'm the, air quotes, regular man on this on the set when it comes yeah. to that show. And I think that's something that um, should be brought to those conversations because... You know, Mr. Jarvis, again, he's he's been there, done that, and, and with this great educational background, and he's going to have a specific type of view and perspective because of where he's been. And then we have Miss, Miss Stacy, who's hands into the hands all over the, the world of spectrum and chips and things like that. I mean, regular people don't talk about 5G and the spectrum and millimeter wave and stuff like that, the way she does, you know, so she has a different perspective. And then there's me that says, hey, man, poor folks can't afford that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm just going to yeah. call it like I see it. I'm like, yeah, this stuff is is all cool and dandy and whatnot, but that thing's expensive and poor folks can't afford that. You know, I try to yeah. I try to sort of bring it back down to earth and we like get the along so well. In the bunch, right. Right. You're right. And I'm not trying to be disparaging towards my co-host or anything like that. But I I, I know my role yeah. <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to that show. They you know, they are the true journalist of the set. I am not a journalist. I am just a contributor and and, and I dig it. You know, but we love each other. We have a lot of fun on that show argue every now and then it gets pretty loud sometimes but it's all in love we really enjoy each other's company each and every wednesday but in addition to that i also um, host a show called tech break which is basically a quick hitter show um i typically will do some product reviews on there if you know someone sends me a camera to check out or or random stuff i actually have some um, audio stuff here that i can't talk about just yet because of embargo right. but you know i'll you know i'll do quick segments on that on that particular show and in addition to that yeah i already mentioned my show has on photography each and every thursday at about 3 p.m pacific time is when it drops um when i'm not doing any type of hosting i'm also a um technical director and sometimes i do producing for the other shows you know I'm, I'm a technical director for a show called floss weekly mm-hmm. which is uh free libra 
open source software show. I didn't think it had anything to do with dentistry, quite honestly. You're the first, because a lot of people look at me sideways when I say that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm the technical director for that show. I I don't do the production. I don't do producing on it. But every now and then, I just sort of give a a nod and a tip here and there for the team. They do a good job. But every now and then, I just try to help them out from a search engine optimization standpoint. And um, when I need to fill in to produce for this week in Google or this week in tech or something like that, I can uh, because, you know, the producers take vacation time and stuff like that. So I stay busy. And oh, and I also technical direct this week in enterprise tech. That's what I do on Fridays. So today, you know, as I'm sitting here talking to you on a Friday, I have been involved in, including this show right now, five shows, whether it's being a guest, whether it's being a host, whether it's being part of pre and post production today five shows today you're a celebrity it's, pretty, it's been pretty busy today <laughs> yeah yeah and that and, and, and that's also the, that's the truth because you're doing all these all all these things you since the last time i i spoke with you you've just bloomed i hope so all the things that you're doing. <laughs> i uh, hope so yeah no go ahead you were saying also you were doing something else Oh, yeah. I'm also the community manager for our premium uh, club members. We have a club twit, which is $7 a month for people that would like to have ad free versions of all of our shows. And of course, with that, they get other benefits such as access to a discord server. And then there's an extra bonus feed that will have like some, you know, pre-show stuff that doesn't really make the show um, final edit things like that. Mm. And I do additional content in there. Um, Some of the behind the scenes stuff, if I can record something BTS, I will. It's not a lot of that going on because of this, you know, pandemic and physical distancing and all of that. But I have been producing other events, other content that's strictly for the members, um, such as today. I hosted a, what I call a fireside chat with a, um, lady that's been on the network several times. Her name is Miss Georgia Dow. She's a psychotherapist, but she's also, you know, a technologist. And, you know, so I've grabbed some of our other hosts that are not necessarily here in Petaluma and just done fireside chats and AMAs strictly for our members only. Done a nice. couple of those over the last couple of months, you know, just doing the production on that and getting everything lined up and then go to the studio and turn on the mics and the cameras and just have it to where it's only visible to our um, discord members and paying club twit members. And um, yeah, just send it on out the door and put it in their feeds. If they want to, you know, watch the rerun version of it or they can watch it live as we're doing it. Right. Right. Uh, Wow. So did you hear all that guys? This is all the stuff he's doing. (laughs) And on top of that, He's going to watch all now. your films. <laughs> no, I just think it's so incredibly awesome. Um, you know, uh, I do a lot myself, you know, and yep. then people go, yeah, and, and when do you have time to, like, sleep or do this or do that? I'm like, uh, I just, I, I, I basically freeze. It's like, uh, you know, but now I'm listening to your list and I'm going, this must be what it's like sometimes when I'm sitting there mouthing off all the all the stuff I do. Sometimes people, <laughs> you just, you just pedal a lot. It's like, how do you get from here to there? Like you don't count the steps that you take, right? You just get there. You know, it's, it, this is going to sound arrogant, but no. I promise it's not. If you want something done, you ask someone that's busy to do it. Mm. And, and that's pretty much my, my mode of operation. I hardly ever have moments where I'm bored. Um, yeah. If there's not a task for me to do, I find something else to to do. Just <laughs> poke poke around with something, you know. Oh, what's this light over here for? What happens if I turn this light this way? You know, okay, interesting. Now what happens if I turn this light this way and set my shutter speed to this? You know, I, it, that's just 
how my brain functions. And then every now and then I'll, I'll have moments of just sitting down, finding my, the butt groove of my couch, if you will, <laughs> or, <laughs> or the recliner or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I, I'm, I'm never bored. And my superiors at Twit, they've been kind enough to give me just pretty much 100% autonomy. Oh, that reminds me, I am also tech- technical director of a new show that we just started today, too. Sorry, I forgot about <laughs> that. But anyway. Well, congratulations. They, they, <laughs> You're building a just, mountain. <laughs> <laughs> just thought about that. Oh my but gosh. yeah, I, we, um, you know, they, they've pretty much just given me 100% autonomy. You know, I, I, I'm not micromanaged. You know, I am definitely responsible for hands-on photography, making sure every Thursday my show is hitting the podcast airwaves, period. Yeah. And, and making sure that it's doing well from a number standpoint. They don't ask questions. <laughs> they don't it's just hey is your show good to go yes it is all right see you later that's that's pretty much how the conversation goes and i love that um when i when they brought me on to do the show um the show development was all on me and they said how did you want it how do you want to do this hand and i told them exactly my thoughts and they said okay cool get it done thank you <laughs> And it's, it's been awesome. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people work better like that. Um, and some people can't can't do anything without direction. Like they they just they freeze if they don't have direction. Um, right. Yeah, that's you know, you said me. something earlier that kind of relates to and, and I thought this was a bad thing. But it's like when <laughs> when I have time to chill. Right. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. when my brain just goes, oh, I could now do this other stuff that I couldn't do yep. because I was busy doing something else. Yeah. Mine does that too. And there's good and bad in that, you know, cause sometimes we do need to stop. We do need to decompress and I'm working on that. I am. But, but why at the same we? time, I enjoy <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's healthy. It's just like, um, you can't, if you go to the gym and you work out and do chest every single day, you're not building up your chest muscles. You are slowly degrading your chest muscles. So mm. you need to let them rest for a day or two. Typically, let, them, let those muscles rest for two days. So yeah, that's the thing about working out for building muscles. It's, it's both. It's activity mm-hmm. and then rest and then activity mm-hmm. and then rest. Yeah. So it's no different when it comes to your, your state of mind and your work ethic. You know, yeah, it's good to be a, a grinder, if you will, and push. But every now and then your mental health is going to say, hey, I need just 10 minutes, dude, to do nothing. Leave me be. You know, <laughs> just <laughs> listen to your body. But again, Twit, they, they know that I enjoy doing stuff. And they haven't just dumped things on me. They literally just say, hey, can you go and produce this show? And it's a simple yes or no for me. If it's a yes, I go do it. <laughs> if it's a no, they say, okay, thanks for letting us know. And I appreciate the fact that they continue to ask me to do this or that, whether it's things for my show or something for another show or something um, in the technical director booth or whatever it is. I'm just really, really fortunate to be in the position that I'm in and it's just a, I could actually call it my, quote, job. How oh, nice, <laughs> right? Know? It's crazy, right? This is yeah. my job. It's, it's actually not crazy. This is, this is what happens when you've, when you've built your integrity. It's, it's really important in this industry that we're in, in the digital and the creation industry and all this, because mm-hmm. you're constantly working with people as opposed to for people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's really important for people to, you know, when to count on you, you know, it, yeah. and I relate it to filmmaking, for example, where mm-hmm. you gather a crew and a team and people have this agreement to do certain things to make sure as a whole that this gets done. And there's no question about it when someone says, hey, can you go? Can you work these lights? 
There's no mm-hmm. question that those lights aren't going to happen, you right. know. Uh, there's no question that people are going to go home or or their hotel room or their tent, <laughs> whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. you know, at like midnight and that they're going to be there at 4.30 in the morning the next day. There's no question about that, you know, after working 12 hours a day and things like that. There's just no question. You just build that reputation And next thing you know, you're getting calls to work on another film just based on that. And as the years go by, you develop it. It's beyond reputation. Reputation can be good or bad. But integrity means people can count on you. And that goes so much further. And I think that's what you've built on yourself because you know yourself. You have to know yourself to get to that point. True. You know, True. because you can't say I'm going to do this and that and that and that and this and this and that. You know, I, you know, working as a media manager, you know, for many years myself had to be able to say, yeah, I can do this and that and that and this and this and that and never failed to meet a deadline. And I would stop sometimes and go, I don't know how everything just came together at the right time, but it did. You but know, it did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's the same with you, obviously. <laughs> so. I don't know. I it, I still pinch myself each and every day when I get up and start my morning routine. And when eight o'clock comes, I'm sitting right here in the same chair in front of this mic and starting my quote work day. And it's pretty like, cool, oh. huh? This is my work day. <laughs> now, I mean, I've worked from home for most of my professional career because I was previously in IT support. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm not, you know, new to working from home, but it's nice to sit down in front of this, this screen of mine and look at Lightroom and Photoshop and DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or what have you versus looking at a terminal that's got Java on it or... 4GL code or SQL and screaming people saying that they forgot their passwords and oh I don't miss that oh stuff gosh. at all. I don't miss those days at all. <laughs> Did it for yeah. many years. So uh so Ant, how are you mm-hmm. feeling about um your big job coming up with the uh watching the films? What are you expecting? What's your expectation? Putting well, you on the first spot. off, um <laughs> First off, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah. Secondly, my expectations are they're pretty high because I've seen what people can do and and their name doesn't always end with Scorsese, you know, <laughs> and, right. and it's stuff that's pretty dadgum fascinating. So my expectations are pretty high. So I'm telling you right now, folks, you better bring it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they brought it. <laughs> you better bring it because it's it's amazing to see the creativity that people put in it from all levels of the 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 final product. You know, the 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 scripting, the set design, you know, and I'm saying set in air quotes because the set could just be the street outside, you know. Um this the sound design the director of photography, you know, that, that aspect of it, you know, why did they choose this angle? Why did they choose this particular lens attachment? You know, did, you know, did they go with a bloom filter here? Why did they do that? Um, color grading, you know, all of that stuff. Um, the choice of cast members, you know, all, all of that stuff comes into play and, nobody cares that it was shot on an iPhone 12. It's going to be you and a few other people. You're actually teamed up with um, Maxime Muscle, who was who's uh, the founder of the film festival, the mobile festival, uh, mm-hmm. mobile filmmakers uh, there in Russia. Nice. And Ross Perkins, who was on our last episode, He's an actor and a filmmaker, uh, but he Mm, mm, mm. took best feature film. And that film, that film is 
hard to watch. It's an uncomfortable film, but it keeps you on the edge of your seat throughout the whole film. All so the way it, did it, the it did its job. <laughs> it really did its job. And the acting was just incredible. And, I, and I'm, mm. I'm trying to push more of that, you know, mm-hmm. with the acting, uh, with mobile filmmaking, because part of the, the quality of, of a movie has a lot to do with the acting uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Like you really, mm-hmm. your film could be okay, and then you have that same film with great actors. Oh, my God, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. As long as you got a good story. Um, and then there's uh, Kimberly Hart, who was the producer of that film, also from us. Well, she's from New Zealand, uh, but she lives in Australia. And Robert David Duncan, who I think you may have listened to, he was uh, in our podcast talking about NFTs and uh, mobile filmmaking as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So those are your your uh, your friends on the panel <laughs> uh, <laughs> that are also going to be uh, rating the films. I wanted you to do exactly what you just did. Because I want you to inspire filmmakers who are shooting with the phone to actually pay more attention to those things you were talking about. Yeah. So can you elaborate mm. a little bit more on those? Well, you were saying, after, after I made my comments, you said, well, you're going to see a lot of different stuff. You're going to see documentaries. You're going to see you know, the scripted um, dialogue and things of that nature. Yeah. Even with the documentary, there's still some elements of a of a beautiful film there that that could set you apart from someone else. It's still it's still going to come down to sound design. It's still going to come down to how you're positioning the camera to tell the story of the documentary. Um, all of that stuff comes into play. Yeah. And when it comes to say doing an actual film that's that's going to have some some dialogue in, in the story you know the people that are writing those scripts um it takes a certain level of talent that and creativity that i do not have <laughs> to be able to put words to paper and then hand those 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 papers of words to to a cast person and say hey bring this to life you know, and then it takes even more courage to tell said cast person, you're not bringing it to life. I need you to do it, need you to do it this way. You know, it's hard to challenge people. Um, yes, of course, especially especially when you when you've got them on the team because they're really good. Yeah. You know, it's, it's hard to challenge people. Um, just I guess it's just a human nature thing. I don't have much of a problem with it, but I'm a jerk. So, but oh. it, you get some people, <laughs> you, there's some people, they don't like the, the tiniest bit of confrontation and to challenge a cast person could be considered confrontation. Well, look, this is your film, you know, this is your story. So set the bar, set the expectations that, Hey, I need this script to be read and performed this way and, and, and make it happen, you know, and it's just going to take that level of effort and it's going to take that level of passion and intensity. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to be looking for when I, when I'm watching these, heck, that's what I'm looking for when I'm watching regular gibberish on YouTube and Netflix today. Right. You know, so it's the same kind of effort. Don't care that you did it on a smartphone. It's still the same effort. That's right. It's it. It really is about the content that you are creating. Uh, mm-hmm. It's really about. I mean, there's there's little more to it uh, with the film as opposed. There's a connotation. When I first started the film festival, I consulted with a founder and director of a mm-hmm. big festival uh, mm-hmm. in California that I knew. And um, she told me, you're going to get birthday parties and things like that because they're shot with a cell phone. This is way back, okay, 2009. Yep. Yep. And I said, well, no, because I'm not calling it, it's a film. If I said video, 
or you right. know, video and right. film. There's a difference in that. I mean, it, it's obviously not film film, but mm-hmm. there's a connotation there with the word film that just so true. has cinema behind it, right? Yep. So true. So true. That reminds me of a talk I recently had on my show, wink, wink, plug, plug, hands on photography, twit.tv slash hop, uh, with Mr. <laughs> Scott Bourne. Uh, Mr. Scott Bourne is a world renowned bird photographer, um, wildlife photographer, but particularly bird photographers. And he has, since the pandemic, he has pivoted more into video. Um, people were requesting more video content from him versus his still images and his still images are stellar. You know, you see him anywhere all over the world, but he says, okay, yeah, I have this Sony FS six, you know, very, very nice cinema camera, nice lens on it. Just beautiful dynamic range, you know, the whole nine yards, if you will. But, he was leaving a scene. I think he was in Washington state somewhere, just leaving some particular set scene, whatever. And as he's going down the road, he saw these, these birds just blasting off from this field. And it was right at sunset. And, and he was like, Oh crap, I need to get this. Do you think he pulled over, popped the trunk, opened the case turned on the cinema camera, waited 30 seconds for it to actually boot up, grabbed the lens, make sure it was in focus, and then hit record? No. <laughs> he well, grabbed his... That moment is gone by then. Yeah. Right. He grabbed his phone and recorded it in ProRes, and it was absolutely beautiful. And the thing is, he, he, he remembers grabbing his phone and was thinking, uh, this is a candid moment, and Let me just record this because it's just pretty. But after he looked at it, he says, this is this is cinema worthy. This isn't just a snapshot of me out and about with my buddies. You know, this is cinema worthy. And it just sort of drove home the fact that our first connotation about smartphones is just TikTok and goofy stuff (laughs) when it comes to filming things when it's so much more to it, but it also depends on the person um, handling the camera, you know? Well, yeah. And, the, and, and, you know, because you're in photography, you know that what they say, a picture can tell a thousand words, right? Yep, yep, yep. You can share That's a story right. with one frame. That's right. If you do you it can. just right, yeah. And and I think that's the magic of, my father was a photographer, you know, um, mm-hmm. and he uh, he used to <laughs> he used to uh, he used to climb up light poles <laughs> to get things from different angles and things okay. like. And he would lay down on the ground. Uh, okay, now that sounds things. more like it. <laughs> yeah, and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, so. I grew up watching him do these things with this thing that Mm -hmm. had, you know, this long tube in front of it and he was looking through it. And so when I got my first camera, I think I was around seven and I got my first camera. He gave me the camera. I had wanted one forever because every time I went to touch his right as a toddler, don't touch that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then as I got older, it's like, stop looking at it. You're going to break it. <laughs> oh, of course. It was like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got one, I took a million photos. This is back in the day with film and all that stuff. And I took a million photos and my parents sat me down one day and said, no, no more of that. We can't continue to develop all your photos. Yeah. So you get Quite one. Pricey. Yeah, one whatever roll of film a week or something like that. And I was like, oh, man, there goes my quote unquote Instagram adventure, you know, that didn't exist then. Um, And so I would literally walk around town. This is in Spain. Mm -hmm. And I would walk around town with my camera in front of me and looking through the eye, you know, through the viewfinder. 
-hmm. And then it had a different perspective because all of a sudden I was invisible. Yeah. And everything, all of reality was coming through that viewfinder. So it was like yeah. me watching it on some strange TV. And that mm -hmm. was when I first started thinking about how cool it would be to make movies. Yeah. Wow. That was my first experience with that. But had my parents told me, sure, you can go ahead and continue shooting pictures of bugs and twigs and leaves and... <laughs> dogs mm -hmm. and grass and horses and flowers and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now we want you to shoot 24 of them in a second. Yeah. Here you go. People's go feet as they're sitting down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, and that was, that was the thing, but I was always fascinated by recording also because, um, it, the permanency of it. I mean, yeah. I didn't know until later that it wasn't forever. You know, that the media gets lost, you know. Yeah, it and does, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've taken, I mean, I've got three over 3,000 photos on my phone right now. I have an iPhone XR. <laughs> Just and on I'm the going, dadgum phone. <laughs> I'm going, whoa. <laughs> and it's I've got so more crazy. on external hard drives, and I just can't right. let them go. Yeah. I can't let them go. 3,000 on the phone. On the phone. <laughs> Plus a few, few videos that I, I record when I'm out. Because the, the, the thing is, yeah. I have the 6S, which is the one that I use because it has a, a jack, right? And it yep. shoots 1080 and all that stuff. And I yep. use that when I'm filming, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if I happen to be out and something happens, you know, I'm going to use my regular phone and... I'm going to do my very best for it to come out the very best I can, you know, but right. I like using the native camera. I like yeah. editing my photos without an app because mm -hmm. I feel like by doing things like that, I could show people how to do things like that. Um, I yeah. used to edit videos on Final Cut Pro, you know, for a living. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I stopped, you know, it got, it was like, it's overkill for mobile, you know, you know, like the promotional videos, right? It's like too much. Mm -hmm. So I started mm -hmm. using iMovie and mm -hmm. playing tricks with it. You know, like mm -hmm. literally they don't, they don't give you more than, I think it's like three video tracks. And so I would export, you know, once I was happy with it, I would export it. I would have three different projects for one video. Yeah. And uh, and then export them and bring it into the other one as one track. Things like that. Also known as also pretend. known as nesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Basically, all you're doing, you're just nesting sequences. Yeah. And then nice I would hack. bring. Yeah, it's it's little hacks, you know, like bringing the, you know, the music to sync. I would bring it into GarageBand and then right. make up music, you know, to go along with the video. Or sometimes I would do it different the other way around and I would make up a, a track and then I would put this, you know, bring the video to sync with that. There's so much fun that you can have with free tools that actually give you. I was just telling somebody today about this before you the word expert. The first part of that without the T is experience, basically. Yep, no doubt. In order to experience something, I, I feel like I'm working backwards. You have to do it. You have to do things. So you right. do it to get experience, and that's how you become an expert. But you have to learn from all the mistakes you make because there's no way around that. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So all the, all the um, you know, what you were just saying about Scott, um, that is really, really interesting. I was actually listening to his podcast last night. Oh, his um, the iPhone, iPhone yeah. photo podcast. Yeah. yeah. The, the fifth episode, which was the one that was out last night. And then I started listening to the one that you did today, but then I mm -hmm. got distracted with a phone call and I was never really able to get back to it. Um, <laughs> I think I listened to like, to a little bit of it though. And I think he was saying some of the same things that he was saying in the, in the other 
podcast about how he got started. I mm-hmm. didn't hear that story you shared though. Yeah. Yeah, this was um it, it it was pretty beautiful and we went through it on my show. Um I actually pulled the video footage up um on my show because my show is, is both audio and video versions. And it's right. it's absolutely beautiful <laughs> when you Aww. see it. Absolutely beautiful. There's so many things like that that, you know, I used to live on top of a mountain and I used mm. to go down the mountain every day and then up the mountain and then down. The, uh, but, you know, there's the the morning mist that would rest yeah. on the bottom yeah. as the sun is that. coming up. And I I'm get like, that here in, in Sonoma County because um, it's just mountains and vineyards and farms here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the morning mist is it's 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 absolutely amazing. And then what's even better is the days that we don't get the mist, um the sunrise is just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you don't see it often. Yeah. I mean you see the sun coming up, but it's 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 got a shroud of mist and haze around it. And mm-hmm. but the days or mornings that the mist is, is thinned out, the colors are just so brilliant because of, you know, the atmosphere and all of that stuff. So, oh, it's, it's oh, I love it here. <laughs> just yeah, it. it's, um, I would be coming down the mountain and I'd see this below and it looked like, you know, when you're looking out the airplane yeah. window and all yep. the clouds and you're above yep. them, it's yep. a clear blue sky and... All these clouds underneath that just look like these, this this puff, you know, yeah, like just, big put like big pillows. Yes, <laughs> it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I'm over there with my iPhone four or my 4S or whatever, you know, shooting pictures of it. And I still go back to those. There's a lot of pictures that I put on Instagram and Twitter from sceneries and things like that. Sometimes that were yeah. were shot years ago with yeah. previous phones. Um, and I, I don't, I, what I like is composure, I'm composing the photos, you know, the, the angles, the rule of thirds comes kind of natural to me, Mm -hmm. uh, just because I've done that for so many times. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not surprised. (laughs) Yeah. I remember learning about it and I was like, oh, so it has a name. (laughs) 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 And it's the same thing with, um, because I did graphics, you know, a lot. Right. And I remember when I was talking, I mean, I, when I was taking my classes uh, for video, you know, uh, in video, and they would say, you know, this is where people first look, you know, at this side on the screen. And so if you're going to put, you know, text on the screen, it should be this way. This is why mm-hmm. when you watch the news, they put their little logo over here on this side because they mm-hmm. want to be discreet and things like that. But it's there. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's kind of the same, the same concept. It's all art, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're talking about, really. I mean, we're talking about the combination of art and science with the tech. Yep. And it's and a when beautiful, you get that, beautiful thing. It is. And when you've got, I mean, when I meet people that have mastered that in some way and I tell them that they don't believe it. Right. You know, they just go, well, not yet because internally our job is never done. Right. We're never perfect, but it's not about perfect. You know, it's it's such a subjective thing, but at the same time, there are rules to it. You know, but no, it's not about perfect, but I think it's for a lot of us. And I say us because we are artists. We are content creators. For a lot of us, it's it's the pursuit. You know, it's the, the pursuit towards trying to achieve perfection knowing that we'll never get it but that that pursuit is a oh it fires you up you know i can i can think back to the days of being in twit studios to do the recordings for my show and my heart rate would go up 
And it wasn't from just like nervous, like, oh, crap, don't screw up. My heart rate would just go up from pure excitement. And sometimes I would even sweat. You wouldn't see it on the camera, but I'm sweating under my shirt. And after the show is over, the back of my shirt would be just wet with sweat because I'm just so fired up. And talking to Scott Burn Scott Bourne, he just said it straight out. He says, Doing this photography, it gives me life. <laughs> he said it just like that. He says, I'm an old fart and this is something that I love to do and I love to be able to help others, but it just it just gives me life. You know, and, and <laughs> You ever, have you thought about that? It is, have you ever thought about something that just, you know, every day you get up and you do it and you're like, oh, this is just the best, you know? And most people don't even think about that stuff. Most people dismiss so many little simple pleasures in life and they don't take advantage of them. But, you know, the creative artists, it, I don't know a one that, turns away their little simple pleasure of being creative it's called passion yeah it really is you know yeah i i don't have to set my alarm right i don't <laughs> have to and it's not because it's the weirdest thing because i know I, I used to have to do that back in the days but i, don't I think i did it I out of i one. i've done it out of paranoia you know what yeah, i mean like okay. a like a yeah. backup plan but if I set my alarm, right, uh, for, so I used to get up and go down that mountain. I used to get up at three in the morning. Ooh, Lord. No, I was just I know, going right? to sleep then. So that wasn't No, happen. I was fine with it. <laughs> I, I sometimes wouldn't go to bed until 1130, 12 at night or whatever. And yeah. I'd still be up at three in the morning because I was supposed to get up at three in the morning, get ready. And then I would go to work. But that was right after, more than anything, because I liked doing my job, which yeah. was, you know, in, in video and media managing yep. and all that stuff. And then when, when I started the film festival, I was excited because, hey, I get to do my job. And then after that, because I couldn't get good internet up on that. Wait, I'm really being open with our listeners today and with you, Ant. <laughs> Um, I couldn't get enough internet, you know, where I was, you know, it yeah. was really weak. So I would go to Starbucks on my way home. I would get off of work around three thirty or something like that. And by the time I got to Starbucks is like pure rush hour, you know, Shocking. and I would sit there <laughs> and I would sit there and I would work until I think in the weekdays they closed at 11 Right. And then I would, they'd kick me out <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then I would yeah. go home and then I'd do it all over again. Yeah. I, I think it's passion and passion comes a lot. It's very connected to the side of us that creates things, you know, that excitement that we were talking about earlier in making things happen, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like mini troubleshooting in a way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the research and the discovery and I'm going to get this done and I'm going to see this through that creativity in a way um, yeah that's all very connected to passion that drives you that puts you in the zone don't bother me totally I'm into agree. this <laughs> I totally agree <laughs> uh, well that's it then we're done <laughs> 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 hey aunt i wanted to ask you for our listeners give us some since you're you're really good with tech uh and i'm looking at your you video fooled. okay <laughs> <laughs> i think i got you fooled because i'm not that good with tech at least well, i don't I'm, think so. i watch your videos and you do put you put some serious thought into lighting I can tell you oh, that. Yeah. Oh, what yeah, would be the what what would you recommend for a YouTuber or a a filmmaker or a or video producer or something like that? What would you say is something that's middle ground, not very expensive? Mm -hmm. Um like give us three, like the top notch, the middle notch, <laughs> and the low ground 
for the poor people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I will give you the top notch for sure. Um, uh, cause I'm affiliated with them. Uh, there's a company called light in motion and they have a, a, a lighting kit, uh, called Stella pro and they are, uh, lithium ion powered and they run, man, they'll run all day, not all day, but they'll run for, you know, three, four hours at full power and they're constant lighting led lights mm. super portable um but they're pricey and but the light that you get off of them you know if you say you need a light that's going to be 5600 kelvin this light's going to be 5600 kelvin it's not going to be any guessing game to it so you don't have to worry about your white balance being off and whatnot um how much but it's power the does Stella it run? pro the Stella pro is oh Dang, you, you put me on the spot there. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> let me see. I believe from a pricing standpoint, it's about $1,200. It's the Stella Pro CLX-10. I'm looking it up on the computer right now. Oh, one of the Stella things Pro. I learned in my video production days is like not all lights are house friendly. And we're talking about right. low L lights and, and things right. like that, Right. Right. This one, though, this one is ideally for they're, they're pushing it more towards portrait photographers. Mm. But if but portrait photographers and video creators pretty much go hand in hand because of their approach. Um, video lighting, it's, it's all about how soft you can get it, how soft you can get the light or how big you can get the light, not necessarily how bright. Right. You know? And this one is, it's super versatile. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a LED chip on board light. It's freaking rainproof. You can take it outside in the rain and shoot with it. I did that. Nice. And, and it just works. No <laughs> but it's like I said, and <laughs> no, and the battery can pop off of it. You can change the heads on it just in case you want to put a different type of um, LED onto it. You know, if you don't want to have a 5600 Kelvin one, you want to have something more like 4000. It's a different color temperature. You can put one of those on there. It is, it is a legit professional grade light. Uh, but that's the Stella Pro CLX 10 um, okay. light. So that's the the middle. I mean the upper tier. Middle tier, I still like a lot of the things that are offered from the folks at Aperture. Um, the classic Aperture uh, 120, 120D, I believe it's the, I believe it's portable. I'm drawing a blank on everything tonight. See, now I got to go to Amazon. Good grief! <laughs> uh, but the Aperture, <laughs> it's it's 120 120 watt. Um, uh, LED light. Again, you're dealing with perfect uh, color temperature, so you, there's no guessing game. And you're dealing with a, a, a pretty high build quality. These things are sturdy and built like tanks, but yet they still have their um, portability, you know. Um, but that's the 120. Let me see how much it costs. And those, Aperture. do they come with stands? They do not come with stands. You have to have your own stand. But they have the casing, <laughs> right? They have their own case and they have remotes. Now, the Stella Pro does not have a remote that comes with it. You can buy one, but I, I don't think you'll need it. I don't. I don't use one with mine. Um, it's literally just a push button and set it and forget it kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so neat. But the Aperture One Twenty D will run you about five hundred and forty-five dollars here on uh, Amazon. Okay. Totally. Middle. All right. Totally. I mean, that's like less than half. Right. Yeah. So now we get more into the budget friendly ones, which I definitely stand behind them because I still use them. Yeah. And that would be the Godot line. Um, they have an SL line, Sierra Lima line, but those are you have to have a power supply with them. Um, I'm trying to think of the one that has the built-in battery, but I, and I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's very similar to the SL line where they range in 60, 60 watt output, or you can get them up to a hundred, 120 watt output and the pricing on them 
could start from anywhere from about a hundred hundred and twenty dollars up to about three hundred dollars depending on the wattage and depend on if you're getting a lithium ion battery powered one versus an AC powered one. I use two AC powered ones pretty regularly for shooting um product B roll. Because yeah. they're just it's just easy to just plug them in, throw them on a the stand, um, either here in my home studio or downstairs in the well. Sixty watts garage. is kind of like a like a like a house lamp. Yes, but you can't put a reflector on a house lamp. Right. You put a ref, you put a reflector on one of these. That sixty watts is it looks Every way time. brighter than what it is. Um, plus then there's also the modifiers that you can add to them to, to give yourself some softer light. Um, I, I typically use a 24 or 36 inch, uh, parabolic soft box for most of the things that I shoot, just because I love how the, the light wraps around the subject and gives you really, really soft shadows as it's wrapping around and, in video and photography, if you can have some decent shadows wrapping around, that's giving you natural contrast right there and really going to help your subject to, to stand out. So, but yeah, those lights, they're inexpensive, anywhere from $120 up to about 300 bucks, and they will get the job done. And that's the Godot's SL line. Yeah, and I'm, I, you know, when I used to use the, the lights uh, for interviewing people for documentaries and things like that. Um, there's like the three point lighting, right? Rule. Yep. But I yep. only used two because what yeah, I would two. do is I would, a, as long as the ceiling is low enough, right? Mm -hmm. I would put one in the back, right? That would bounce mm -hmm. off the ceiling and then put the other one off between the front and the side. And it was mm -hmm. really nice. And they worked really nice. Yep. You know, and, and of course, it's not like you're sitting in the dark and then just using these lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. also a mm -hmm. little bit of natural lights and, and things yep. like that as well. Um, Ambience, yeah. Yeah. And so, but that that's also important because um, lighting is is mood setting. I mean, there's a reason yep. why candle lights are romantic and things like that. But yeah, yep. you're setting the mood and and the emotion on a scene, even if it's just for a documentary. You know, you see you sometimes know, the cr the crime documentaries where they're sitting very um, the key light is very strong, but everything else is very shadowed and dark and sharp. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's for a reason. Intimidation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> I use a two light setup for my show. Um, I have one large key light in a 36 inch parabolic box. And then I have one of those um, Godot's SL lights back behind me as a hair light. And it's only running at about 10%. So yeah. you'll notice there's just a little splash of hair shining on my bald head. <laughs> but it works, but it works perfectly because it separates me from the background. And actually, I take that back. I do use three lights. I have a floor light behind me that has a purple um, gel on it and it's running at low power, but it casts up just a bit of purple glow onto my black backdrop. And it just it just really adds depth to my little tiny 10 by 10 studio <laughs> nice do you have videos which you where you're explaining these things i'm pretty sure i do <laughs> yeah well you'll I, have to share sure one we'll, we'll we'll put one it's in in the notes in the you know yeah I, I i think i did i think i walked through it when the pandemic started because when I, when the pandemic started and we were forced to um shelter in place yeah. You know, at Twit, we couldn't shut down. We still had shows to do. Mm -hmm. So the challenge was getting all of the hosts squared away with their home studio set up. I was already ready to go. It's, yeah, okay, sure, I'm ready. You know, Because <laughs> I already had everything, and my desk was already set up when I moved out here. You know, so it was, 
I was set to go, and I I want to say I put a video on my YouTube channel that where I walked through just setting up or showing how I had set up my desk and the lighting and so on and so forth. And this is this reminds me there is one more light that I would love to recommend. Um, it got really popular when the pandemic kicked off. You may have heard of the Elgato um, light panels. A lot of the gamers. I'm you thinking know. of a song. That song. Oh boy. <laughs> I said a gato to a lady from Spain. What am I thinking? Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking of that song that goes. Well, I'm not gonna sing it, but it's like uh, that car song by Queen. You lost me. <laughs> it's a. It's it's um. In, I think it was like in Wayne's World they sang it all in the car. Yep. Still lost me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Our listeners are like, that song, that movie, that song, it's called such and such. <laughs> <laughs> They're Mr. much cooler. Bogato or something, I don't know. They're I'm really bad with lyrics. I am. <laughs> no. This, um, <laughs> this, this light, though, it was, it, El Gato is a popular brand known with um, streamers online. A lot of the Twitch, popular Twitch folks and YouTube streamers, they is use that the, El Gato. That's not the circle Keylights. one, right? No, this one's okay. it was a square, square shaped light. Okay. And but there was a knockoff version of that light called Dazny. Delta Alpha Zulu Zulu uh Nancy Echo Dazny. Dazny D fifty. You can get <laughs> one of those lights for I'm looking at it now, it's now eighty nine dollars. It used to be a hundred bucks for one of those. Wow. I highly, highly recommend these things. They are ridiculous ridiculously bright they're about 15 inches in size i use one for that's what i use for my floor light um, but i have a, a couple of them here i like these lights so much um we have maybe two more scattered somewhere in the house that we use as part of regular lighting in the house because <laughs> they just we just I, I stuck them on a stand in the corner and they're just perfect and my other half, she uses one um, for when she's doing, you know, projects, painting things and whatnot. She has it mounted to her desk. And it's just, it's ridiculously bright and clean. Um, you can change the color temperature on them from 5,600 Kelvin all the way down to about 3,800 Kelvin. So they'll get really, really tungsten color. Um very, very nice. And they're under 100 bucks. where the actual name brand version are going to cost you twice as much. So, huh. And if the you want to make them portable, you can make them yeah. portable. You just have to have some um, Sony NPF batteries to power them. That's awesome. Wow. That's, I'm <laughs> so glad I asked. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great information. And... And a lot of a lot of um, people that are uh, you know doing tutorials for for anything mm -hmm. right now. I mm -hmm. mean that's just that's just like everybody's doing tutorials of of, of some sort. People yep. are doing them TikTok and Reels and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about you know the the recipes, yeah, you know, in the kitchen that people yep. do, um, and how good you know lights come into that. Um, I know that one of the things I learned in photography was to use your flash in the daytime when you're doing portraits, you know, because it really does liven up people. Right. It separates them from the background. Yeah. And, and it helps with the shadows, too. Right. And not all flashes are created equally. So don't use the no. flash that's on the top of your camera. No. <laughs> use <laughs> another type of flash that you buy separately. Because the one yeah. that's integrated with your camera is pretty bad light. Um, yeah. yeah. But it can, and, it can bring I, up the quality of a photo like a lot. And people mm -hmm. don't think about it in the daytime about doing that. Mm -hmm. I don't like the flash on my phone. I, I never turn oh, that no. thing on. They're, they're, they're only good as a flashlight. That's the only purpose yeah, that right? thing is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only purpose that thing serves. Is this a flashlight? A really convenient flashlight. Yeah, they're horrible <laughs> when you when you're at a restaurant or something and somebody's flash goes off. You're you're like, 
delete that, please. That's just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything is dark except for people's faces. You know. Please don't the, post that. <laughs> yeah. Please. Oh God. <laughs> well. <laughs> wow. So, is there anything that that we missed that you've been doing that our listeners should know about? Miss mm. Susie, I don't know. I think that's all. Oh, Lord, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've been, we've been. I know I sidetracked a little bit, but I just found, I just found everything so interesting. You know that you were talking about before uh, the story of the birds, the you know, <laughs> the whole lights thing was incredible. Um, and I'll admit, I it, when it comes to lighting, I know I have overkill here. I I, I know it, and heck, my show is shot on a six K camera. Yeah, I was going to say that also <laughs> has something. You know, that's the other part of the picture per se. It's not just the lights that's going to give you. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's total overkill, and I know it. But that gummit, I own it. I got it. I might as well use it. <laughs> yeah, freaking six K. That's awesome. <laughs> you also, our listeners should know um, that you're not an iPhone person that you're using uh are you always using what are you using right now yeah when I use a a smartphone it's nine times out of ten it is a Google um pixel line right now I'm on the pixel 6 pro an amazing piece of hardware with really craptastic software (laughs) it's it's this version of Android is really really bad I've never had issues with Android um, because I was a tinkerer, so I didn't. I I liked it, um, but this this latest version of Android, it is. I'm I'm not sure what they were thinking. Just really rushed this operating system out. Just blame um, it on but yeah, COVID. I've, <laughs> yeah, not yeah. I'm not buying that. Good grief. <laughs> um, but yeah, That's this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I use. But the camera's this, good. Yeah, this camera is just. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. I did a demo on This Week in Google, as well as on my Instagram Reels, where I paired this phone with one of these Stellar Pro lights that I have and shot some quick portraits of my other half, and you wouldn't know I shot it with a phone. Oh, I saw that. I think I saw (laughs) that. Wow. You'd have no idea that I shot it with a phone, but it was totally just me and this pixel. Shot some macro stuff with it, and you'd never know. But then again, when it comes to macro... I have tripods and phone mounts and all of that stuff that it's super overkill, but it'll really do the job if you, you know, apply it properly. I have an iPhone here from the Twit office if I yeah. want to use it to test something out, but I do not <laughs> like iOS. I just don't like iOS. I love the phones. The I'm hardware I'm completely is... backwards. I used to have a PC just to test how graphics would look on a on yeah. a PC or, or like uh, on a website, you know, on a PC yeah. browser or whatever. I don't know. Right. It's just like. <laughs> yeah. But and I'm not the biggest fan of Windows either. But fortunately, I don't see my operating system when I'm at my computer. Most of the time, uh, I just see my apps, you know. Yeah. If I'm in Lightroom, if I'm in Premiere or Resolve, I don't see Windows. I just see that app. And that's how it should be. Can't say that about Android. Android just keeps, this version 12, it just keeps getting in the way for no reason at all. Are and, they, do they know it? Are they going to upgrade that? Or oh, what the heck? man. Yeah, they've heard it. And they've, they've done a recent update um, to try to fix a bunch of bugs uh, this month here in December 2022. Um, but they still got more to do. They know it. They rushed this, uh, this operating system out. And it's wow. so sad, you know, but <laughs> iOS, on the other hand, iOS is very, very pretty. Yeah. It's just super pretty, super smooth, but I don't really like the experience with it. You know, the whole swiping thing I, I, and gestures and all of that. I'm, I but don't see, want babies that. love that. Haven't you ever watched right. babies? They're just like right, but that's us. the thing. <laughs> this that and that's the thing with iOS, and they pretty much touted it to you know that 
hey, to use this where babies can use this, build it to where babies can use it. Or essentially they're saying we dumbed this thing down to where anybody can use it. They just didn't want to say it that way. But rem- have you seen the movies, the futuristic movies, or like they're they're looking at that glass map, right? Yep. Out on yep. the spaceship, and they're doing those gestures as well. Yep. It's, yep. It's Don't the like future. gestures. <laughs> I have one. I have a camera right here in front of me right now that is gesture controlled, oh. and it is pointing. It's pointing sideways. Why? Because that crap isn't working yet. <laughs> It's just, everybody's throwing that AI into their stuff and it's still not quite uh, polished. So get I, I'm still for I'm now. still on on the yeah. Now now for me, when they have an iPhone Pro Max Ultimate, whatever, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you don't have that that I can just pick up and it automatically knows exactly what to do. So that everything I shoot with it comes out perfect, then I'll be super happy. We're getting pretty because close. It's getting it's getting really cl- like for example with the stabilization, like you practically mm-hmm. don't need. Now, with that being said, I hardly like I have a um, I have a gimbal, and I find mm-hmm. that thing to be more of a pain than anything to use. <laughs> Have a I right I know I mean, how I to handle. Months. Yeah, I know how to <laughs> handle a camera. I'm not gonna do running scenes or anything like that for anything I've been doing. But I also yeah. know that uh, a long time ago, I think it was around 2000. Was it 2014 when they came out with the the time lapse and the slow mo and all that? Mm-hmm. Where I was sitting at mm-hmm. Starbucks. And I was panning left and right. And I realized that just running it on slow motion, you know, when you don't have a lot of activity around it. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that thing was super Mm -hmm. smooth. Mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, Mm -hmm. it's like I'm on a dolly or something, you know. It's like a dolly shot. You know, so there's there's tricks like that. But also, um, I, I like to shoot a lot of stuff where... Because I'm so used to using other cameras in video production, I used to shoot a lot of events and things like that. Yeah. You know, doing pans and tilts. But I know the speed that people, because the phone is so small and so light, and people forget that what that thing sees is not the same as what you're looking at. True. It's like, Hold it there. Use your eyes to look around before you go there, <laughs> and then yeah. slowly pan. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. the the movements are. You have to do them slower. But yeah, I think the I think the, it it's a combination. It's kind of like what you were saying with your six K and your lights, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same thing with cameras and videos, uh, video cameras, photography, all that stuff. It's good to learn and practice and then look at it as if you're not shooting it on an iPhone. Mm-hmm. Raise your expectations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. That's my peeve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ant, if that's all we do, let's see. Uh, how do people follow you on Twitter? Now, we're going to put links to everything. Just about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, if Ant can find some links to say, good Lord. Uh, but no, <laughs> follow me on the social media platforms. Um, I am Ant underscore Pruitt on Twitter. And I am also Ant underscore Pruitt on Instagram. Give me a shout on Instagram. I actually should try, probably try to get my follower count up over there <laughs> to, to match up with my Twitter count. Yeah, I guess that's something I should work on. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm fairly active on both platforms and and try to um, engage with folks that engage with me that aren't robots and trying to get me to buy crypto and stuff like that. <laughs> Almost all the messages I get on social media. Um, I was going to share with everybody that if you really like all that Ant is doing and you get something from it buy him a beer 
It's <laughs> buymeacoffee.com Aunt Pruitt with two T's. <laughs> hey, uh, let's give a shout out. Let's give a shout out. I'll say it and then you repeat it. Okay. To our sponsors. Let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Are you ready? All right. All right. Film Convert. Film Convert. Awesome. (laughs) Moondog Labs. Moondog Labs. Getting it done. (laughs) Filmic Pro. Oh, Filmic Pro featured on this week's Hands-On Photography episode 113. Just absolutely crushing it. Engraving Pros. Engraving Pros, because you know what? It's yours. (laughs) They're actually... (laughs) are beautiful trophies for the film festival. They're very unique. Handpicked That's what's by up. me. <laughs> That's what's uh, up. That's what's yep. up. That's that's them. And check this out. Star Wars Steampunk Universe. Star Wars Steampunk Universe. Because you can only get just as nerdy as this. <laughs> I think they're going to love that. <laughs> there is uh, no well, more. Well, look, uh, one of their, okay, one of their founders, their founders are, um, okay, Dude Vader. <laughs> and Dude Vader. Dude. And Hot Nerd Girl. <laughs> Hot Nerd. I'm not touching that one. Nope. I know. Hot nerd girl. <laughs> Every time I say her name, I, I, I laugh. Um, mm-hmm. and, and then there's Swords and, Swords and Circuitry Studios. Swords and Circuitry Studios. Wow. Nice yeah. work, gents. <laughs> and Mobile Film Stories. Mobile film stories, because we all have a story to tell and we have a mobile device. Get it done. Oh, that's perfect. (laughs) 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 All right. That's that's fantastic. I also wanted to point out that our feature film judges are Jennifer Zhang, Errol Trotman, Airwood, Randy Davison and Stephen Palmer Peterson. And if there's anything, nothing else you've got to say, which I'm sure you have things to say, but this, you know, it's Friday night. Let's get that started, right? <laughs> <laughs> what, you mean You mean the butt groove on my couch? Yeah. Yes, sure. Let's get that started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be going there. <laughs> but, <laughs> oops. <laughs> um Hey, you all have a good weekend Um, next weekend. This is coming out on Tuesday, so I don't know why I said that. It's like we're live. Um, (laughs) Thank you so much, and thanks for being a judge at the film festival this year. Really appreciate it. Uh, Maybe if you love it, you'll you'll do it again next year. (laughs) It Um, is my pleasure. I appreciate you asking me and considering me. Yes, this, this is awesome. Oh, I'm, I'm just, it's an honor uh, for us to have you. And um, thank you again for being on the show. Sure, sure. You know I love this show. Yeah, well, you inspire people. So it's like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> 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 All right, say goodbye to our listeners, Aunt. Goodbye, listeners. Y'all do well and be well. <laughs> <laughs>